I'm glad of that this morning. All right, let's get the book. Take your Bible, turn to 1 John. 1 John, that's not St. John, the big John. That's the three, little John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. 1st John, chapter 1. This morning, the book of 1st John, one of the toughest books in the whole New Testament. Uh, take a give me just that deal. 1st uh, John, chapter number 1, and verse 8. Everybody look at this. Here we're going to talk about this morning. 1st John, chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. I want to preach this morning on deceiving yourself. Deceiving yourself. Now, I, I hate to be deceived. Nobody likes to be tricked. Don't you hate somebody to trick you? I mean, it's not so aggravating. Somebody uh, burn you a blister, take advantage of you, cheat you on a car, cheat you on a business deal, and or deceive you and tell you something, and, uh, and they walk away with the money, and you you're you're out. I man, it makes you it makes you aggravated when somebody tricks you, and then I really hate it when the devil tricks me. The devil's tricked me before; he deceived me before. He'll tell you stuff. He'll tell you stuff that ain't right to get you to do something wrong. And then he's got you and laughs at you. The devil will deceive you. People will deceive you. I tell you something worse than either one of them is when you deceive yourself. That's a bad way to get in. That's a bad shape to get in. And let's talk about that a little bit this morning. When you deceive you, you know they say they say you tell yourself a lie long enough you'll start to believe it. And there are people sitting in this room today that are Christians, saved as 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 anybody else. But you have told yourself stuff so long, you actually believe it about yourself. That's a mess. You're 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 in trouble. And I'm so I'm gonna out here a little bit this morning, and we're gonna talk about deceiving yourself. You say, brother Danny, what are you talking about? Well, the the verse I read that'd be my first point. When you think that you have no sin, but you tell yourself, I don't I don't know anything. I I know I know you'd never say it. There's people in here, you'd never say it. But the truth is, you think you don't do nothing wrong. And I there ain't much help for somebody like you. Nobody can tell you nothing. You know it all. You're quick to show everybody else's sin. But you've never, listen, I was people's pastor, and I'm not talking about anybody in this room, probably might be, but I was some people's pastor for 20 years and never one time seen them go to the altar, ask God to forgive them or nothing, say, I'm sorry, uh, and, uh, stand up and, Cry and ask the Lord at church. You know, I've never seen it one time. Hey, people like that's got a problem. You can't tell me in 20 years you don't do something stupid and mess up and need to repent. You can't tell me that. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. You're just good at hiding it and act like you're all right. Now, the Bible said, if a man say, say he have no sin, he deceives himself. Did you know your flesh responds to sin? I understand we're not supposed to live in sin. I understand sin is not supposed to have dominion over us. I understand that we're not supposed to wallow in sin. I tell you what I've seen though. I've seen people got saved and they'd lay down alcohol, for example, and they say, I'm never going to drink another drop. I'm not going to touch it. I'm not going to touch no wine, no beer, no liquor. There's no excuse for it. I'm going to leave it alone and live right and God bless their life and then go six, eight, ten years and then be around it one day, and it takes all they can do to keep them going. Now, you know what? That's sin inside you. You say, I thought I got the victory over that. No, it's inside you. Did, did you know that you have sin inside you? It's inside you, people. You're, you're, you're born with it, and you, know, you say, I got saved. I thought it got all sin. No, your record was cleansed. Your heart was washed. But that sin nature is still inside you. And if you say you ain't got it, you are only deceiving yourself. One of the biggest uh, uh, tragedies of our generation is everybody got this idea is that I'm special, I'm great. And I'm going to tell you parents something. I know some of y'all don't like to hear this, but you don't, you're don't. you not doing your kids right by telling them they're so wonderful and great and precious and perfect. I, I understand you should brag on your kids. You should put positive thoughts into your kids. You should brag on them when they do right. I get all that. I understand. But these kids nowadays grow up thinking 
that they're better than everybody else and there's some kind of princess or some kind of royalty or something like that. And the truth is they're not. I mean, just as soon as you turn your head, that sin will come right out of them. Uh, it, it, it really blows my mind how every redneck in Burke County now wants to be a celebrity. And I put, look at this picture of me. And you like this picture of me? And I have to run it through 14 filters so you can't see the bumps on their face. And, and uh, don't I look good? Yeah, but I'd hate to see you in real life. Uh, when you first get up in the morning, say, make a freight train, take a back road. Uh, but I, listen, that's what the, but everybody, I'm a celebrity. I'm a celebrity. You know what really is funny? These teenagers make their mom uh, live in an old redneck town, you know, and they got two dimes to rub together and make their mom go in debt and get a limousine uh, to come and get them to take them to the prom. That ain't the stupidest thing. Uh, I mean, oh, I'm, I'm a princess. I'm wonderful. You know what we got when I graduated? Nothing. I didn't get a party. I didn't get a, a gift. I didn't think my daddy even come. You ain't supposed to brag on somebody doing something they're supposed to do anyway. Do something special, maybe. I'm just kidding you. I ain't, I ain't mad at you. I mean, is it that big a deal that your kid made an A? You got to be pretty dumb to fail school nowadays. On purpose, see. Uh, but I, I, I remember I've been I've been picked up in a limousine before. I, I flew to New York City and I got at the airport and these guys I don't know where they got. If they were in this limousine or something. They said, "Let's pick old old Castle up in the limousine. He'll think anymore." They come in and they said, "Get in." I said, "What are y'all doing? You try you drug dealers or something?" And they said, "Get in here, pretty. I got in the back of that thing and there's a table there and a chair. The chair turned around backwards, and and, and I I sat there and I rode, and we rode through New York City, and I said, well, "This is the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life." I thought I'd rather be in Toyota Camry, uh, where I could drive it, and uh, I said, "I ain't no, I ain't special." Guess what? You ain't either. You're deceiving yourself. Oh, oh. I'm really, I I want to work through. I'm the prince. I'm, get your head down there a little bit. You're gonna get shot off. That's right. That's right. And when you think you have no sin, you're deceiving yourself, buddy. You're mean as a snake. And, and all of us are. All of us are. All of us have sin in our lives. That's right, brother. If you, if you think you're perfect, you try not washing for a week or two. You stink. Uh, everything comes out of you stink. Your breath stinks. I, I mean, your feet stink. Uh, where's that come from? How come you can wash real good and don't do nothing and start stinking again? It's inside you. You're rotten, buddy. You're rotten. People say, no, brother. Dan. I've even heard preachers say nowadays, we got to get out of this mentality of thinking we're sinners. We're not sinners no more. We're Christians. We're soldiers for Christ. We're more than... Con no. They, they don't understand how to rightly divide the Scripture. Positionally, Positionally, we are in Christ, and He sees no sin, and we're, we're, we're in His soldiers, and we're in His army, and we're royalty. I get all that. But in this flesh... You're a sinner. You're a sinner in your flesh. And if you don't believe it, you're deceiving yourself. You get up in the morning and say, all right, buddy, what are you up to today? Looking at me. <laughs> and you say, all right, I'm going to do my best, Lord, to keep old Danny down. Let the new man have his way. Let the Lord have his way. You are sinning. I, I heard a guy say one time, he said, uh, a preacher. He said, we got to get out of we got to get out of this stuff of calling ourselves a wretch. Oh, you know, uh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound. People sung forever that saved a wretch like me. He said, we got to quit that stuff. We're not wretches. We're not wretches. Uh, I, I beg to differ with you, buddy. I beg to differ with you. You hang around people long enough and watch see if we ain't wretches. All of us. You say, no, that means before you're saved. Paul was saved in Romans chapter 7. And he said, I don't do this, I don't do that, I try to do good and I don't do it, I don't mean to do wrong, then I do it. He, oh, wretched man that I am. Not was, am. We got a whole generation of Christians deceiving themselves in their dominion theology and their kingdom theology as we're going to tread on serpent. No, not yet. One day, yes. One day, we will rule with God. One day, we will have dominion over this old world. But now, you're a saved man living in a lost body. And you're a wretch, brother, and you got to fight sin daily. You are a worm, brother. That's what the Bible said. Here's what you say. Well, I can do anything. You just tell your kids you can do anything you want to. Let me tell you what Jesus said. 
I might help you. John 15, 5. Without me, you do nothing. Jesus didn't get around and say, now you can do anything you want to. Just believe in yourself. He said, without me, you can't do nothing. Without me, you are nothing. You better get your doctrine straight, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, we are, you're, 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 uh, you're uh, deceiving yourself when you tell you you're not a sinner. Amen? Now, number two, you deceive yourself when you think you're right, but you can't keep your mouth shut. What the Bible says. James 1, 6. Everybody listening? This is the Bible. Ladies, young people, if any man seem to be religious, but bridleth not his tongue, that means you can keep your mouth shut. This man's religion is vain. I'm looking at a bunch of people in here this morning. Your religion's vain. You think you're so spiritual. You think you're just so right. And as soon as you hear something, you go tell all your friends. You call everybody. You want to make sure everybody knows. I, I've, never, I've never seen a beat in my life as, as, as men and women. You said, no, we fuss about women. They do it more. I can prove that. Uh, but we, men do it too. And, they're gonna, and they just cannot wait to tell somebody, did you hear about so-and-so? Did you hear about so and Well, I heard that she did. And I heard that they did that. Your religion's vain, you man. You say, uh-uh, I'm spiritual. The Bible said you're wasting your time. You can't keep your mouth shut. Your religion is vain. Let me, let me tell you something, people. I'm supposed to get up here and preach about sin. But in my personal life, I really ain't got no business criticizing you, and you ain't got no business criticizing me or that person you're sitting beside either. Ain't that right? Say amen. It really ain't none of your business. Uh, you're so quick to point out everybody's faults except yours, and let's say, and then you'll humble down and say, Well, I know I'm a sinner too. Blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you about everybody. Else. No, your religion is vain. You're deceiving yourself. Everybody in here ought to make up your mind. Hey, I hear about that woman said she traded in her. A vacuum cleaner for a new phone because you could get more dirt like that. Uh, that's right, brother. I mean, some people, brother, only, only exercise they ever get is running down their neighbor, pushing their luck, jumping to conclusions. Uh, I, I just, yak, 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 yak. Well, preacher, I have a burden. Yeah, you sure do. And your burden is to blab everything good uh, that about no, everything bad about everybody to make yourself look good and spiritual. You're deceiving yourself. Your religion's vain. And the Lord beat the britches off you. If you'll if you pay attention, he'll beat you like lying. Amen. When you think you're right, but can't hush. They said this guy had this big old machine, like a dirt mover, like we got them sitting over there. Uh, and they called it the Big G. And the Big G was called a Big G because it's a big greater earth mover. They said that thing can move a lot of dirt. And I said, boy, I know some people. That's got the big G on that. Uh, they can sure move a lot of dirt. Uh, did you hear what she said? They said, she said, they said, we said, they said, she said, oh, you're kidding. Yes, sir. I know my brother-in-law's ex-wife's best friend's neighbor lives right beside them. And they said it for a fact. So it's got to be true. No, no. If I Listen, if I know something about somebody and don't, I'm not no different than you. I'm tempted. Sometimes I feel it come up through right here. And then something says, should you really say that? And sometimes I'll say it. And I think, no, I'm wrong. Shouldn't say that. Shouldn't say that. Because you're trying to make somebody look bad. Have, I, have anybody heard any good sermons on gossip lately? And you know, tell that story. Said that, that woman, she lived in this town, and she knowed everybody and told everything to everybody. She felt like God had called her to make sure nobody got away with nothing. By the way, that's the reason a lot of people quit church because they mess up and do something wrong and everybody at church starts yak, 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 and they get their feelings hurt so bad the devil knocks them out with it. The Bible said go to one and restore them in the spirit of meekness. Not get on Facebook and say, you know who you are. How babyish, how childish. I, is it getting quiet in here or is it just me? I mean, I was up half a night, and up, three, up nights, three nights in a row, but are y'all dead or am I just imagining this? I mean, I mean, am I saying something wrong? I mean, have I said something wrong? I don't think I have. If I have, you're welcome. Somebody stand up and correct me right now. Okay, you had to change. Uh, look, you, you, uh, you, listen, I ain't saying nothing wrong. 
We're all guilty of that. Shut your mouth, brother. I mean, be quiet, sister. You feel it start coming up? No, I shouldn't say that. It's not right. And I know it's not right. And it's because I have resentment toward that person that I will make them look bad. And I'm honest about it. God forgive me. That's what you're deceiving yourself. About that woman, she knew everything about everybody and told it. And said she is she downtown. And this guy that went to the church was an electrician. He's doing a job downtown. And his truck, his truck that everybody knows, everybody knows his town, was parked down there in front of a bar for two or three days downtown, right in front of a bar. So she went to town and told ever she went to church, told everybody, he's down there drunk. Saw his truck sitting down there at the bar all week and told all the women in the church, well, they didn't have no confidence in that guy. And somebody came up to him and said, what are you going to do about that? And he said, I don't know. I'll, I'll handle it. So you know what he did? The next weekend, he took his truck and went down and pulled it right up and parked it in her driveway and locked the keys and left it there all weekend. <laughs> that got you, didn't he, big mouth? Yeah, yeah, we know why. Yeah, he's on your house all week. See, you, you can't operate like that. You can't operate like that. Can everybody give me a big hearty amen? You got a 20, you got a 24-hour day job keeping yourself straight. Really, we do. I do too. I'm the first to admit, I'm a mess. I mean, unless the Lord helps me, I ain't worth nothing. God's been good to me, and the only thing good about me, or you either, is what the Lord has done in our life. It's true. It's true. You're deceiving yourself. But then they say, thirdly, right quickly this morning, listen. You deceive yourself when you think bad company won't hurt you. You're deceiving yourself. Here's what the Bible said. 1 Corinthians 3. Evil communication corrupt good manners. That means you cannot, you cannot hang around the wrong crowd and it not rub off on you. Young people, listen to me. If you're out with a bunch of people and they're out partying and they're doing something wrong, it will not be long till you will be partaking. If you'll do it. You're, you're, you, it's like throwing a kid in a swimming pool. They're going to get wet. You hang around the wrong people, it will rub off. There's a girl one time, she wanted to go to some dance like that, and her, and, her, and her daddy said no. And she said, but daddy, I'm not going to do nothing wrong. He said, no, you're not going. She said, but daddy, I promise I'm not going to do anything wrong. And he said, uh, go over and pick me up on them coals off of that of that uh, the fireplace. So she went over and picked up like that, you know. And he, he said, now, put it back down. She put it back down. He said, now, let me see your hand. And it had, it had this black soot all over it. And he said, you see there? Bad company will smut you every time. You hang around the wrong crowd. I know you hear it preached so much. You teenagers, you better hear me. You say, I don't, they're funny. They're fun to be around. I, you better listen. You better listen. You hang around the wrong crowd. It will rub off on you. When all the boys want to get together and go so when all the girls want to take a girl's beach trip and all leave their husbands at home and uh, some bunch of demonic stuff like that, you better say, hey, you better say, hey, the Bible said evil communication corrupt good manners. If somebody wants you to go to a concert, you better tell them, hey, evil communication corrupt good manners. Well, we just want to go Saturday night and have a good time. No, you, you mean you want to go flirt with sin and think it won't hurt you? It will hurt you. It will hurt you. It will hurt you. Uh, evil communications corrupt good manners. We all know story after story after story after story after story story after story of the young girl in church and lived for the Lord and sung in the choir and everything. Next thing you know, she's dating a boy uh, that don't go to church and won't serve God, but he's cute and he's so wonderful and he's so charming and he just does something for you that nobody else, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've heard that story 500 times and there's been a many a good girl who got out of church completely because they thought bad company, wouldn't they? They've been a many a good young man went down the tube, got on drugs Everything. Just because he went one night with the boys, one night to the party, one night to the drinking, and it got on him and messed up his life. Be not deceived. You're deceiving yourself. You think you can do it and it won't hurt you. Number four, you deceive yourself when you sit and listen to somebody preach and don't try to live it. What well, it says, James 1.22, said, don't just be hearers of the word, 
but be doers. Now, look, I love every one of y'all, and I'm so glad you're here. I wouldn't, I don't, I ain't in the running off business. I don't understand preachers that like to run people off. I never have. It breaks my heart if one person, if one person gets mad, quits, or let, it kills. I don't care if they're a bus kid. I, I got a pastor's heart. And you'd have, to, you'd have to be a pastor to know how it hurts when people get out of church. It hurts. It hurts. Just like one of your kids. Uh, it breaks your heart. And I'm not talking about it, but I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to give you a stern warning to everybody in here. A lot of people think, well, I go to church every Sunday. I go to church every Sunday. And somehow or another you think, God's okay with me. I'm okay with God. But you don't do one-tenth of what I preach. On purpose. And I'm talking about good Christian people. You're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself if you say, well, I went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night. Yeah, but did you hear the word and not uh, do the word, not hear only? I mean, if a preacher preaches on giving, you ought to give. Preacher preaches on witnessing, you ought to witness. Preacher preaches on uh, against worldliness, get rid of whatever he preaches. If the preacher is right and he's got scripture to back up where, what he says, you will give an account to God for sitting there listening and walking out that door ignoring what the man said. That puts you in a scary, I, that's a scary. And I don't want nobody to quit, but I'd be scared to come sit at church every Sunday and listen to preaching and walk right out and have no intention of doing what I heard. I'd be scared. You're, you're worse off than somebody that ain't heard it. When you listen, but won't do it. And then number five, last. You deceive yourself when you think you won't pay and reap what you sow for your sin. You deceive yourself. David, you know why God put all them stories in the Bible? Here's David. David, a man after God's own heart, loved the Lord with all of his heart, got messed up with sin. He, 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 had to, he was in charge of God's army. He fell and messed around with this woman. He had her husband brought home, and then it didn't work out, and he sent him back and had him killed. Murder. Had the man killed. Swept it under the rug. Thought nobody knew about it. The woman turned up pregnant. And then you know what happened? David thought nobody's going to know. Her husband's dead now. We'll just get married. And everybody thinks about it. He thought it all had all that covered up. Do you know what happened? The Lord smote that child. And the Lord let that little baby lay there and die. You say, God wouldn't do that. God already did do it. God already did do it. I'm telling you, David thought he wouldn't pay for his sin. David thought, hey, y'all hear me? David thought he could get away with it. He didn't get away with it, and you ain't getting away with it. Nobody's getting away with it. You, the Bible said, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And all God's people said, right. I'm not an exception. You're not an exception. Jonah, run from God. I ain't going to do what God wants me to do. Next thing you know, he winds up in the belly of a fish. Peter cusses and denies the Lord. Winds up bawling his eyes out out there on the side of the road somewhere. Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar, all those wicked kings that dishonored God wound up in the lake of fire one day when the Lord has the great judgment day. When you think you won't pay for sin. You've heard this, and I've said it, and other people have said it. And I'm going to give you something else and I'm done. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over, expecting a different result. One, one lady told me, she said, well, I just got a bad relationship. Sierra, you're later. I got rid of him. I'm just in another bad relationship. And I said, well, what happened to him? Well, I'm just in another bad relationship. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and over, expecting it to be different. It ain't different. And until you get it through that thick head of yours that you're going to have to do right and honor God and put things in the right perspective and in the right uh, order, you're never going to learn your lesson. It's the same with any sin. We all think, Good old God's up there. He, he, got, he got more to worry about than my little old sin. Now, it don't matter. I mean, it's, my goodness, look at what other people do it. Now, they have, that's the worst way to think, buddy. You better judge yourself. If you do something wrong, I tell you what you better do. Get down on your knees and ask forgiveness and judge yourself. 
The Lord will go easy on you if you do that. But if you stick that head up there and say, well, I ain't no worse than nobody else. Everybody else is sinning. I'm just as good as anybody else. you fixing, you fixing to make you a dirty, long, hard bed to lay in. Is what the book teaches. You cannot sow bad habits and reap a good character. You cannot sow hatred and reap love. You cannot sow wicked thoughts and look at dirty stuff on your phone and expect to have a clean mind and life. You cannot sow wrong deeds and expect to live righteous living. You cannot sow crime and reap freedom. You cannot sow drugs or alcohol and reap a healthy body. Listen. You cannot sow self-indulgence and not show it on your face. Your face will show it when you're living wrong. You cannot sow dishonesty and reap integrity. You cannot sow profanity and reap clean speech. You cannot sow disrespect and, re and, and, sow and reap respect. You cannot sow deception and reap confidence. You cannot sow untidiness and reap. You cannot sow unrestraint and reap temperance. You cannot sow laziness and reap good living. You cannot sow cruelty and reap kindness. You cannot sow cowardice and reach courage. You cannot sow destruction and reap protection. You cannot sow greed and reap generosity. You cannot neglect the church and expect everything to go right in your life. You cannot expect, uh, sow thorns and, and, and reap roses. You can't sow hell and then reap heaven when you die. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You deceive yourself. Now here's the thing this morning. You listen? Don't worry about your neighbor talking to you. You're deceiving yourself. If you say, well, God understands. No, he don't either. He don't. If he, he, if he got David, and he got Jonah, and he got Peter, and he got all in. He'll get you too. He'll get you too. I'm not a judge, but that might be why everything's going wrong in your life all the time. I don't know that. I'm not making that judgment. Only you and God know that. But it be why you can't never get nowhere, or why this is constantly dealing with some mess. I don't know that. I'm not judging. I'd fall and break my neck right out there this morning. And if I do, I deserve it. So I'm not judging nobody else. But if I was some of y'all, I'd begin to ask myself a question. You reckon, they, reckon God's talking to me? Has that ever crossed your mind? You ever think like that? Don't it, don't it hit you once in a while? The Lord might be, I just go right on, right on, bam, hit your head on the wall, bam, hit your head on the wall, bam. Hit. Listen, I, look, it wouldn't take me but one night in jail, brother. I'd straighten up right quick. <laughs> I'd say, okay, okay, Lord, I'll never, I'll never do that again. See, some people just don't get it. They think it's bad luck or bad health or bad finances or something like that. Have you ever just wondered, maybe God might be talking to me? Maybe there's somebody here this morning. And you're here and you're saying, you know what? The Lord about to beat me to death, preacher. He about to beat me to death. Get the message. Straighten up. Straighten up, man. Get right with God. Quit doing whatever you're doing wrong. You're in a sinful relationship. You're shacking up. You're living wrong. You, you, you're getting drunk, getting high. Part you're lying, fooling around on something you ain't supposed to be messing with. Straighten it up, and then God will bless you up a little at a time. Don't deceive yourself. Let's stand. I want her to come sing that song about take me back to the cross, whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but she's going to sing a song. We sing up in Virginia. Maybe you're here this morning. And you might say, you know what, Brother Danny? That was hard to listen to, but you're right. What you said was true, preacher. But I'm going to ask the Lord to take me back to Calvary this morning. I don't, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of getting a beating all the time. I'm tired of it. Take me back to Calvary. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. God, speak to our hearts this morning. Lord, I pray for that one those here this morning that need to come get back to Calvary dear Lord please please touch them Lord I pray God in Jesus name for that man that woman that boy that girl whoever in here this morning
that felt conviction. Think, oh my goodness, he's talking to me. Oh my goodness, Lord, you're speaking to me. Heaven to make you come down here and make things right. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes it doubt. Amen. 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 Come on. I just get Sometimes out of my seat right now. Come on down here. Kneel down. Come on, ladies. Come on. Come on, teenagers. Amen. That's right. That's right. Just getting altered. Man up. Man up, y'all. Man up. Say, Lord, I'm wrong. Lord, I'm wrong. Get it right. Come on. Come on, right now. Amen. Amen. That's right, girl. Come on. Amen. Take me back to Calvary. Amen. Take me to the cross. Yeah, take me back to Calvary. Remind me where Start I was. Start all over again. Amen. Remind me what it cost. Amen. Glory. You thought I was yeah. worth it. Take me back to Calvary. Even knowing who I am. Amen. Redeemed is That's how right. I bleed. Forgiven's where I stand. That's right. Amen. Take me back to Calvary, Lord. Be gone. Be a good time to do it. Just get, get your head knocked off. Let the Lord help you this morning. You still love a wretch like me. Take, Take me back, back to Calvary. Calvary. Amen. Start all over. Amen. Get your fresh start this morning. Come on, girl. Amen. Amen. Sometimes the weight has crushed me. Amen. And without even oh, knowing God. Oh, I try Lord, to do us. it oh, all Oh, Lord, help us this morning. God, take me back to Calvary. God, help me not to deceive that myself. You are my God, take me back to Calvary. Lord, let us start all over again this morning. Dark Hallelujah. Hour. Lord, let the ground be level. You let us start with a fresh, clean slate. Wash us in the blood. Hey. Take me back to Calvary. Amen. Come on this morning. Come on. Come on. Take me back to Calvary. Amen. Remind me what it cost. Hallelujah. You thought I was worth it. Amen. Knowing who I am. Amen. Redeemed is how I plead. Hallelujah. Forgiven's where I stand. Amen. And when the voice of doubt Amen. and unbelief Glory. has driven me Amen. to my knees, Glory. and I wonder how you so a wretch like me take me back to Calvary. Just playing softly this morning, so I'm still praying. Good advice right there. Everybody here, y'all just say, Lord, just take me back to Calvary. Take me back to Calvary. Fresh start. I just prayed that a minute ago right there. You know why? Because I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner saved by grace. And I, my flesh is just as mean as yours is. You can't let this flesh have its way. That's why Paul said, I died daily. What do you think he meant when he said that? He meant every day that old man rose up and said, I want to have my way today. No. You got to say, no, Lord, take me back to Calvary. You only get saved one time. But you go back to Calvary every day. Like Paul did. Start all over. I die daily. Start all over every day. I'm glad there's a new day. I'm glad God didn't make it where it just stays daylight all the time. That'd be rough. You get to sleep, wake up, and start all over again. That's a blessing. It's a new week. It's a new day. It's going to be a new month here in a couple of days. A good time to make a fresh start. Some of y'all need to make a fresh start. Get in church. Get in church regular. Get in there. It's on fire. Don't listen. Listen, we're facing some mighty, mighty bad times here in the next couple of months. I preached it last night. 90 seconds to midnight. That was the title of my sermon. I'll probably do it here sometime or something like it. And I talked about how the stuff that's going on. Y'all heard about this week, just this week. And I, you don't even have to watch the news. That UFO reporting thing they had in at Congress this week. You know, that's never happened before in history. And now it's common knowledge it's everywhere. They're letting out a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time to condition people so when the big thing happens, people accept it. And when we're gone, that'll be how they explain it. The world's being deceived, people. If you've ever got right with God, you better get back in there. You better get back in head over heels. I'm telling you, I'm not saying this because I'm a preacher. I'm saying it's because this thing going down, this world is going down like that. Run to Jesus 
Get your heart right with God. Get more on fire for Read your Bible more. Pray more. Witness. Do all you can for the Lord. It ain't down here. It's up there. Amen. All right. Thanks, sister. All right. Heart's clear. Don't miss tonight's service. Come back at 6 o'clock. Bring somebody with you. We've got something uh, special planned for this evening. We're going to have some good singing. Might have some testimonies from Virginia. And so uh, don't miss the service tonight. Come bring somebody. All right. Let's bow our head and pray. And after this, you can fellowship a little bit. Uh, keep everything in mind. Ask God right now while we're praying, Lord, help me not just be sitting here and be a hearer, but a doer of the Word of God. But Jeff, dismiss us.